Well, uh, I also would like to welcome you all this morning. Mm, I am Agnes Mori and uh, I also work in the Institute of Evolution in the Center for Ecological Research. And uh, in the few, in the next few minutes, uh, I would like uh, uh, to give you a brief introduction to the world of genome scale metabolic modeling, uh, which is an excellent tool for studying the key aspects of the microbial community. The further uh, these aspects, uh, an important challenge in microbial communities analysis is determining the composition and the quantifying nutrient and energy flows. Uh, another one is to identify the interactions of populations uh, with each other and their environment. Uh, and uh, finally, to use this uh, to infer higher the properties of the system, um, that is uh, to determine their biological function. Uh, microbial communities can be considered uh, complex adaptive systems, uh, meaning that uh, many of their interacting components uh, are present uh, uh, at multiple or organiz organizational levels. Uh, uh, the the coherent behavior of the system results uh, from uh, various interactions between the agents and their local environment. Uh, microbial communities often show much greater biomass composition and activity variation than uh, plants and animal populations. Uh, these complex non-equilibrium non dynamics are driven by environmental factors psychological responses of in, in individual cells and the, the temporological frequency of interactions between cells. The typical time scale of these uh, processes can vary by nine orders of magnitude from an enzymatic reaction to seasonal community succession. Uh, uh, therefore, uh, we need simulation models uh, to understand the dynamics of systems at this level of complexity. On the other hand, uh, the number of possible interactions uh, increases exponentially with the number of species in the community, which already hinders the implementation of conventional in vitro uh, and in vivo experiments. Uh, there is a wide variety of mathematical approaches in the literature. In general, uh, the level of complexity and detail uh, of models should be determined by the purpose of the simulation and the targeted time and length, and, uh, length scales. In my presentation, I will briefly describe the opportunities, tools, and uh, uh, the challenges of applying uh, genome scale uh, metabolic models without claiming uh, completeness, of course. Uh, but before moving on, uh, I would like to briefly summarize uh, microbial relationships uh, as one of the most crucial aspects considered by gen genome scale models. Uh, members of microbial communities interact uh, by uh, exchanging metabolites and molecular si signals to detect and uh, to respond to each other's presence. These interactions uh, enable a division of labor, which means uh, that um, the products of the community uh, results from a combination of tasks uh, performed by its constituent individuals or populations. Uh, some organisms within a community uh, that use environmental resources similarly or perform uh, similar functions are, are called uh, functional groups or microbial guilds. Uh, these interact with each other and act uh, actually as the functional bricks of the community uh, that, that make up of natural and uh, engineered communities. Uh, uh, that means that the diversity of uh, environmental processes is uh, determined mainly by the diversity of microbial guilds. 
uh, in microbial communities, interactions between species or guilds can be driven by metabolism or by ecological trait, traits. Uh, here I want to emphasize the role of metabolism uh, since understanding it enables uh, both the theoretical mechanistic models and the experimental manipulations guided by them. The net effect of a metabolic interaction between two species can be positive, negative, or neutral, meaning that they don't uh, interact with each other. Possible combinations of winning, losing, or neutral outcomes for two interacting partners, neglecting the directionality of the interaction, results in the six basic interaction patterns, uh, as you can see here. Uh, this figure this figure shows uh, these interaction patterns in ecological and corresponding metabolic representations, meaning uh, that uh, uh, the communication between species uh, is uh, through their metabolic products. Uh, since the number of possible interaction uh, states can quickly reach large numbers of even a few species, uh, the challenge is to identify fundamental interactions that are overrepresented in a, in a community or that may have a significant impact uh, at community level. For example, I mean uh, that have stabilizing or destabilizing interactions in the community. Uh, genome scale metabolic models provide an excellent tools uh, to investigate these interactions. Uh, and uh, there are four general appro approaches used to study microbial communities uh, in general, as a whole. The phenotypic modeling approach is, in fact, uh, the kinetic modeling, which uses uh, ordinary differential equations with kinetic parameters, extended with kinetic parameters, and describes changes in uh, biomass and metabolic uh, concentrations over time. Uh, these are actually applied to smaller communities. The sequence of abundance-based modeling includes uh, statistical methods that can infer co-occurrence and co-exclusion patterns and estimate uh, physiological traits such as growth rate based on meta metagenomic analysis. The agent-based modeling describe the different system elements, elements, for example, the populations, metabolites, or the environment that interact with each other and uh, respond to per perturbations according to specific rules. And finally, the constraint-based methods you, uh, use uh, metabolic, uh, metabolic reconstructions from annotated genomes and uh, apply genome scale stoichiometric models and optimization methods to determine the feasible uh, phenotypic space of a metabolic network. This makes them suitable for simulating interspecies metabolism in microbiomes and studying microbial interactions. As uh, since the latter is the most popular and widely used modeling approach, in the following, I will describe uh, the related methods in a more detailed uh, way. The constraint based metabolic models are actually mathematical structures derived from uh, genome scale network reconstructions, uh, representing the entire repertoire of biochemical reactions in a cell or microbial community. The metabolic network is constructed using genomic information from the species in question. And uh, this is done uh, in the following uh, way. Firstly, the DNA of the organism encodes information on the synthesis uh, of specific proteins, let's say A and D, uh, with enzymatic activities. And these proteins catalyze specific reactions where metabolites are used as substrates uh, to be converted into products. Uh, and uh, subsequent reactions uh, for metabolic pathways uh, that constitute uh, the cell's metabolism. After that, each reaction is represented as a stoichiometric reaction. Uh, you can see that here. 
And the equations are then combined into a comprehensive list or list of reactions involved uh, in the model pathways. Uh, for each microbial taxon or guild, an initial uh, metabolic network should be constructed from gene annotation data found uh, uh, in the literature and uh, uh, online biochemical databases. For example, in the KEG, the model seed, or NCBI, as you can see uh, in this table. Uh, the databases are used to uh, obtain the complete set of stoichiometric equations needed to map or reconstruct uh, the complete biochemical pathways. The biochemical literature is also used to get the details of reaction stoichiometry, uh, the information about uh, cofactors and byproducts. The increasing uh, amount of genome sequencing data has led to emergence of uh, different network reconstruction resources to explore the behavior of uh, microbial communities. A growing number of databases are available. For example, the Agora, which is an open database uh, of over uh, 800 uh, reconstructed, right, reconstructed uh, genome scale network reconstructions of um, microorganisms from the human gut. But there are many other tools uh, available for the semi automatic reconstructions of networks. Among the most popular are Model Seed and Raven, uh, where uh, relevant uh, gene protein re reaction connections are determined uh, from the annotated genome sequence using different databases resulting in sketch reconstructions. Another bottom-up approach is uh, the CARVME, which using the big uh, database, it uh, optimizes the reactions to be maintained in the new reconstruction based on sequence similarity to the annotated genome. However, uh, the reconstructions generated by these platforms require further manual curation to solve various problems, including stoichiometric consistency, reaction directionality, gene annotations, and biological functions of the organism based on experimental knowledge. A crucial step is the gap filling. It means the, uh, refining the metabolic reconstruction by adding metabolic reactions uh, which are not identified during genome annotation. Uh, gap filling reactions uh, link metabolic pathways that are known uh, to occur in the organism. And uh, there are several algorithms uh, that have been developed to accelerate and facilitate these steps, uh, such as uh, you can say here the SMILEY, the gap find, or SONEC. Uh, transforming this network reconstruction of the organism or microbial yield into a model uh, requires converting the reaction list into a mathematical format. Thus, the stoichiometric coefficients uh, of the equations are located in the, stoichi in, in the stoichiometric matrix, uh, uh, matrix, which is in fact uh, the heart of uh, all constraint-based models. Each row of this matrix uh, represents uh, an individual compound, and each column represents a reaction. That means that uh, each entry in the, in the S matrix is the stoichiometric coefficient uh, of the metabolite in the reaction in question. A negative value indicates that the corresponding compound uh, is consumed in the reaction. In contrast, a positive value indicates that the reaction is going to uh, generalize the corresponding metabolite. A stoichiometric coefficient of zero is used for each metabolite that is not involved in a, in a given reaction. Uh, this S matrix uh, contains uh, all information related, related to the reactions modeled for uh, a given organism. Uh, the constraints of the model system are defined uh, using physical, chemical, and environmental data as network inputs. Uh, these constraints can be grouped into five categories. The first is uh, the physical chemical uh, constraints, for example, 
conservation of mass uh, defined um, in the S matrix. The topological uh, constraints means, for example, compartmentalization and spatial restrictions associated with metabolites or enzymes uh, defined in the matrix. The third is the uh, genotypical constraints, uh, uh, which uh, uh, are defined by the profile of functional greens uh, expressed by the organisms under a given environmental condition which uh, in turn determines which reactions allow, allow the flow of metabolites. Uh, there are environmental constraints also, for example, the composition of the media, and uh, these constraint, constraints are captured in the as uh, lower and upper bounds of substrate consumption rates. Uh, the thermodynamic uh, constraints are defined by the concentration and fluxes of the observed compound, com compounds or metabolites and uh, uh, the GIPS energy of uh, reaction and captured in the model as reaction reversibility. Uh, the first three types of constraints will generally define the structure of the model, uh, meaning uh, the list of equations and network topology while the environmental and the thermodynamic constraints uh, generally define the model input data. And uh, once the metabolic, metabolic network is, uh, is recorded in a matrix format, uh, various mathematical, mathematical analyses can be performed. The flux, the flux balance analysis is the most basic and commonly used constraint-based method. I am in, will introduce it here shortly to il illustrate how metabolic reaction rates or fluxes can be predicted. predicted. In the FB, uh, the dynamic mass balance of each metabolite in the network can be described by this equation, uh, where uh, X is the vector of metabolite uh, concentrations and Y is the vector of metabolic flux uh, through all reactions in the network. Uh, the transitions in metabolic activity are typically on the order of a few minutes, much faster than the rate of cell growth or other changes in the microbial environment. That means that uh, we can consider metabolic changes a steady state relative to the growth and environmental transients. Uh, however, in a steady state system, the change in metabolite concentration over time is zero. This equation therefore means uh, that the fluxes uh, of the formation of a metabolite are in equilibrium with the decay fluxes, so that the sum of the flux fluxes here is zero. In other words, the accumulation of metabolites is ignored and all mass fluxes entering the network are removed. In the system in question, we can model a given environmental phenotypic state by defining uh, specific values for the reaction fluxes. Uh, if we set a lower or an upper bound for each flux, while the limits of exchange reactions uh, represent uh, the influx and efflux of nutrients into and uh, out of the system, Transplant reactions across the cell membrane and metabolic reactions within the cell membrane represents the thermodynamic and physical chemical limits of reaction rates due to the availability of catalytic enzymes. The set rates define a particular environment and physiological state and reduce the number of possible solutions. Since there are more reactions than metabolites, there is no unique uh, flux distribution solution. Uh, therefore, an optimization algorithm uh, uh, is used uh, to find the optimal distribution that minimizes or maximizes a given user, user defined objective function. Uh, in the case of FBL, this, op uh, this optimization alg uh, algorithm is uh, linear programming. Typically, the objective function is set to maximize the rate of biomass function, uh, biomass uh, production reaction, 
Although we can use other objective functions depending on the simulation condition, such as minimizing resource consumption and maximizing ATP production. Therefore, the output of the, of the flux balance analysis is a flux vector that maximizes or minimizes the objective function. Here you can see the mathematical formalism of the FBA optimization problems. Uh, the FP is a very uh, widely used and a versatile tool uh, that can be used for many, many purposes. For example, by adjusting the upper and lower bounds of metabolites, we can simulate uh, microbial growth on different media. In the case of the, for example, in the case of the intestinal microbiome, we can, we can simulate changes in nutrition. Uh, another possibility is uh, that setting the flux of a parameter, uh, flux of a particular metabolite to zero, I simulate uh, gene knockout or the absence of a member of the microbiome, uh, allowing the viability of the microbial community under different conditions and the effect of adding new species on the host as a whole. There are various software packages for creating and simulating constraint-based models. The, this table lists a few of them with their type and their application opportunities. One of uh, the most common is the COBRA uh, uh, toolbox. Uh, COBRA stands for the constraint-based reconstruction analysis. And it is a MATLAB or Python-based tool with many, many application possibilities. In this slide, uh, I want you to show a possible model workflow. You can also see the corresponding data resources and the software packages used for each step. Uh, in the first step, we search the scientific literature and available databases to ob obtain the stoichiometric equations for the reactions that make up each metabolic uh, pathway. The network reconstruction can be done in a simple Excel spreadsheet as this format is easy to use and the data can be easily transfer, transferred between different, very different simulation software. After that, a list of equations is loaded into MATLAB using the COBRA toolbox. And, uh, but this step can also be done with the other software packages such as opt, opt flux. In the next step, we can use Excel and the R software to record the metabolite con concentration curves, observing the experimental cultures, and then calculate the specific, specific fluxes of production and consumption of the culture substrate and its products. The acquisition of experimental data characterizing the microbial community properties is essential, as these that are needed to compare the predictions generated by the models. In the third step, the substrate consumption rates measured in the experimental cultures are used as model inputs. This will be the constraints in the COBRA toolbook. Uh, the model is simulated uh, by, for example, using FBA and uh, then fitted to observe data series from the cultures. After calibration, the COBRA toolbook is used to perform a second round of analysis to estimate metabolic rates and of the experimental cultures operating parameters or metabolic pathway, pathways is inferred from these estimated metabolic rates. Finally, uh, we can perform network visualization and topology analysis using Cytoscape, Cell Designer or Opsuk softwares. So this can be a possible workflow of, of the investigation of a general problem connected with metabolic uh, processes. Uh, many aspects of microbial metabolism can be well studied by investigating pure cultures of individual species. Many prior model methods then capture the interaction between micro microbes. However, uh, this raises some structural questions. Uh, for example, how could we 
uh, link uh, species models or should the metabolites be shared uh, essentially, uh, essentially ignoring uh, species uh, boundaries or how should we, uh, the metabolite sharing, sharing be restricted uh, to metabolites for which empirical evidence is available uh, or how could we link the species models to the environment or a host uh, system on the other hand uh, there are other questions regarding the analysis uh, for example uh, should the optimization be used to estimate the optimal species yield or community yield is there conflict uh, between these two objectives in silico or in vitro and the question is uh, which optimization strategies can lead to the most useful analysis in the context of these issues uh, for many uh, frameworks have emerged uh, over the years. In the case of the most simple approach, uh, the LAMP approach, uh, or also known as enzyme soap approach, the community is modeled as a single uh, entity uh, in which all metabolic reactions and metabolites of the species are combined into a single reaction set. Uh, meaning a single uh, stoichiometric ma matrix. In the compartment per uh, guild approach, um, each microorganism is represented as a distinct uh, compartment, which is its own set of reaction sites. And the uh, exchangeable metabolites are crossed over an extra compartment uh, representing an excess extracellular environment. In the B-level op optimization approach, uh, uh, this approach is an extension of the compartmentalization strategy, allowing the application of a community level object objective function. And the fourth is the, uh, the dynamic models, models, which are coupled with constraint-based models describe dynamic ch changes in metabolite and biomass concentrations over time. Uh, I will now go into a little more detail about, about uh, these approaches. Mm, as, as I mentioned above, the lambda approach completely ignores spatial boundaries. Uh, it focuses on exploring the metabolic potential of the whole community rather than on interactions between uh, the different uh, taxa. The reactions of species A, B, and C belong to a single system of equations where the overlapping blocks uh, represent uh, common reactions. In this framework, uh, any reaction of any species can potentially be linked to any other reaction to form actually a meta, uh, a meta pathway. Uh, we obtain the spectrum of compounds produced by the community by maximizing the reaction rate, re representing the total biomass production of the community, which is the sum of the precursor and stoichiometric coefficients, uh, coefficients of all biomass synthesized, uh, all biomass synthesized uh, by the community members. Of course, uh, this approach has both advantages and disadvantages. Ignoring microbial diversity and assuming a virtual microorganism capable of carrying out the uh, capable of carrying out the most common biological transformations is uh, acceptable in steady state and where mixed conditions because it greatly simplifies the model development and uh, the calibration process. Uh, the metabolic potential of the community can be tested directly since it is unnecessary to assign individual reactions to their constituent yields. Another advantage is that the approach is quite flexible, scalable uh, to different levels of detail and has a low computational burden. But if we use this approach, we neglect the microbial diversity and process uh, dynamics. And uh, consequently, these uh, uh, the lumped networks capture the overall material and energy transformations catalyzed by the community without providing detailed information on individual gears and their interaction. Uh, this method also neglects uh, the logistic involving the transfer of metabolites between organisms 
including the conversion conversion of a given metabolite into one for uh, into one for which transporters are available. Consequently, uh, the lumped network approach is uh, not strictly suitable for modeling microbial interactions, but rather for initial and uh, exploratory analysis of the general behavior of a given community. Uh, let me give you an example. Uh, this approach has been used to investigate topological differences uh, uh, between networks reconstructed uh, from healthy and disease, uh, disease metagenomic data. Uh, let's take uh, a step further to the compartmentalization approach. Uh, here, each microorganism is represented as a different compartment with its own set of reactions and metabolites. And the exchangeable metabolites are transferred through an extra compartment representing the extracellular environment. Uh, this fictitious extra compartment represents the extracellular environment shared by the species, so they are modeled as if they were spatially separated by the extracellular medium. Uh, explicit transport reactions are defined to account for the exchange of metabolites between species and the extracellular environment. Uh, the biomass production reactions are defined for each species, and the optimization problem is usually solved by maximizing the biomass uh, production rate, which is obtained by summing the biomass production rate of all modern species. Uh, the species abundance can be captured by scaling the sub uh, substrate uptake rate of the whole community by a vector containing the fraction of each species in the biomass. In this way, the substrate uptake rate of species will be proportional to the amount of biomass uh, of the species. Uh, dividing the community into species level compartments linked by transferred metabolites, such as oxygen, uh, is an intuitive way to represent interactions. However, uh, this approach is optimal for analyzing pairwise interactions of communities consisting of only a few different mic microbial guilds. It is also uh, ideal for understanding which species perform a particular metabolic transformation. For example, estimating the fraction of total biomass or ATP produced by each species is easy. Mm, it also uh, allows you to capture species abundance profiles as observed in uh, experiments. The disadvantage of this approach is uh, that uh, the size of res the resulting network can lead to a combinatorial explosion, explosion of new pathways consisting of reactions from different species. Uh, to address uh, th this, uh, 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 to address this uh, model, individual species can be built to capture only the metabolic capabilities required by maintaining uh, computational uh, tractability. Another drawback is that significant a priori information or assumptions are required as uh, specific transport uh, responses uh, must be assigned to each species. But uh, using this approach makes it possible to capture interactions such as commensalism or competition or to design media based on metabolic requirements of each, each species. Uh, the previous uh, approaches uh, rely on a single objective function to describe the whole community or on a separate optimization problem for each microorganism. In contrast, the B-level optimization approach assume, assumes uh, no universal or community-specific fitness criterion, integrating species and community-level fitness criteria into a, a multi-level framework. Uh, this uh, algorithm uses successive simulation runs to analyze potential interactions within the community. The first round of optimization simulations, for example, a flux balance analysis, is applied separately for each species, species model, each uh, modeled species. This step uh, defines a separated biomass maximization problem for each uh, taxa as an internal optimization problem, initial or internal uh, problem. 
and uh, consequently captures the driving forces of species level fitness. Then uh, ecologically relevant interactions are identified in the output data. And based on these, new stoichiometric responses are defined, which are used in the second round of optimization simulations to investigate the possibility of interspecies interactions. Uh, this is the so-called external optimization step, which, capture, which, which uh, captures metabolite exchange between different species and uses the maxim maximization of the total community biomass of the, uh, as the objective function. This framework framework allows the simulation of several classes of metabolic interactions, including mutualism, synergism, commercialism, parasitism, or uh, competition as well. A mutualistic interaction, for example, can be represented by setting the external optimization problem to maximize the biomass of two interacting community members, subject to the internal optimization conditions of each species. The internal uh, conditions can be tailored, including maximization of biomass production or alternative objective functions and uh, steady state constraints. However, uh, a parasite interaction is better represented if the community objective function is set to maximize only the biomass production of the parasite uh, network. Uh, the, uh, the framework has the clear advantage of uh, allowing trade-offs bet between individual and community goals to be explored. A hypothetical example, example might be that uh, two species maintain uh, suboptimal metabolic states, allowing them to catabolize different carbon sources and share the, and, uh, share the produced uh, byproducts. The so-called OPTCOM algorithm is an excellent tool for exploring and explaining these trade-offs between individual metabolic states and the community level optimum. The disadvantages, the disadvantage of uh, this algorithm is that it is computer, computationally ex, ex, uh, expensive and unsuitable for some optimization solvers due to non-linear non constraints. Uh, furthermore, uh, the analysis is, analysis is sensitive to user-defined uh, optimization uh, functions and flux uh, constraints. Therefore, the optcom may be less suitable for under Find communities where metabolic interactions uh, are less uh, well understood. Uh, changes in microbial composition over time are significant for understanding biological interactions. Uh, traditional COBRA methods cannot uh, reconstruct, uh, reconstruct such dynamics of microbial communities. Therefore, um, efforts have been made to include temporal dynamics into the COBRA approach. For this task, uh, the dynamic FBA is the most widely used constraint-based uh, method. Uh, it uses uh, metabolic models extended with kinetic terms to describe the rates of consumption and production of external metabolites following uh, intracellular fluxes. By dynamically updating the latter, latter Using extracellular concentrations and using them as constraints for the FBA, uh, metabolic fluxes and the biomass production can be calculated over a given time. Uh, these latter fluxes can be then used to update the con concentrations of external species. By iteratively repeating this procedure, a system of the ordinary differential equation describes the biomass and external metabolite concentrations as a function of time can be solved. At each time interval, the fluxes of each uh, organism vary according to the substrate concentration at the time resulting in dynamic changes. Uh, the underlying assumption of this approach is that the rate of change uh, within the cell is faster than the rate of change in the surrounding environment, which allows defining the kinetics of environmental factors without defining the kinetics of, of the processes within the cell. Well, uh, in the following, I would like to show you some uh, applications and tools uh, that can be used to predict microbial com community composition based on the above, above approaches, main appro approaches. 
and uh, capture its temporal and spatial variations. First of all, uh, the abundance of species in the community can be determined by sequencing the uh, 16S RNA, RNA content uh, of the metagenome samples. And the very first tool I show you is the MyCom, uh, which is a modeling framework that can reconstruct the growth rates uh, of different bacterial species in the gut and simulate metabolic interactions within microbial, com within microbial communities. It can reveal the ecological rules that shape the microbial landscape uh, of our gut and how a given dietary or probiotic intervention can have a very different effects on different people. For example, it is this tool is suitable for studying the gut microbial composition of individuals uh, between uh, healthy or uh, ill um, individuals and uh, also suitable for simulating cross-feeding interactions involved, for example, in the short chain fatty acid production. All methods and functions of MyCom are implemented in an open source Python package, which is available online, freely available. Another constraint based uh, method for predicting microbial composition is the Stadicom. Uh, it seeks to determine the optimal mi mi microbial composition that supports the maximum growth rate of that community at a steady state. For example, it has been used to determine the dominance of bacteriodes and firmicutes bacteria in the gut, uh, good gut uh, microbiota. Uh, the method uh, solves a finite set of linear optimization problems that uh, don't uh, depend on the number of uh, species considered in the community. A limitation of this approach is that it assumes the same specific growth rate for all community members. This assumption holds over certain time periods. However, it cannot be used to model microbial growth and community dynamic uh, conditions. Steadicom is uh, uh, integrated into the COBRA toolbox. I mentioned above as one of the most extensive tool, uh, tools of constraint-based analysis. Uh, the microbial modeling toolbox uh, allows the study of microbial interactions within a community in a given context uh, using relative microbial abundances as input. Uh, once a community model context to allocate with experimental data has been constructed, uh, this tool allows the predic prediction of metabolic crossfeeding. Uh, uh, the MMT this a simple steady state approach to, to study pairwise interactions within a community. Uh, community models generated with this tool differ from others uh, in that uh, unconventional compartments can be considered. It is also freely available as a part of the MATLAB uh, based COBRA toolbox. toolbox. Uh, Casino is an, another tool uh, that allows similar analysis. Uh, by defining a specific diet and microbial abundance, it has made it possible to simulate the production and consumption profile of different metabolites with the added advantage of predicting the individual contribution of uh, each, species, each species. For example, the production of short chain fatty acids. Mm. However, the application of this tool is limited, limited to small communities. If, uh, in addition uh, to the composition, the analysis requires an understanding of the temporal dynamics of the system, we need to use tools, uh, such tools that include extensions in this direction. The dynamic optcom is an ex extension of the above mentioned uh, optcom algorithm. It uses a multi-level, multi-objective uh, optimization approach that maximizes the total biomass and individual specific growth rates at each time step, uh, ultimately resulting in a temporal profile of the consor uh, consortium composition. It has also been used to simulate cross-feeding metabolic interactions uh, between uh, uh, E. coli oxytrophs. The microbial sim is also a dynamic FPA-based simulator 
Descri it describes the dynamic evolution of biomass composition and metabolite concentrations in a microbial community growing, uh, growing in culture uh, because it incorporates a numerically robust integration scheme. scheme. It allows efficient simulation of uh, large numbers of species, avoiding infeasible traje trajectories. I mean, for example, the neg negative concentrations. Uh, it describes the temporal growth and the metabolic consumption or production of several microbial species in a well mixed culture, which in turn may uh, miss critical metabolic phenomena arising from spatial interactions, especially in the case of simulations of the gut microbiota. Uh, Microbiosim is implemented in MATLAB and uh, requires the COBRA toolbox. Uh, the biological fun function of a community depends on en environmental factors such as the availability of nutrients or oxygen, uh, light, intensity of, uh, li light intensity or temperature. To adequately capture this interdependence, it is necessary to describe the evolution of uh, cells and molecules not only over time, but also through their spatial distribution. Since this is the focus of the following presentation and one of the afternoon demonstration held by uh, Gergely. Uh, uh, I will only mention a few, or, or a few tools. The first one is the COMETS, uh, which uses dynamic flux balance analysis to simulate metabolic production, consumption, and diffusion on a, on a discretized grid uh, to simulate spatial and temporal uh, gradient. Another one is the Bacarina, which also describes the evolution and spatial distribution of different species and metabolites. Uh, it employs a hybrid agent-based framework that combines MPA and Michaelis and kinetics to describe the dynamics of agents, allowing not only the prediction of abundances, but also the spatial distribution of representative consortium members and the niche segregation in the human gut. Uh, Bakarin is an open source software implemented in the R. Uh, the agent modeling methods are very well suited to capture species dynamics and spatial distribution and are highly flexible to integrate uh, results from FBA. Uh, that means that more and more hybrid uh, agent based methods are being used. The agent and constraint based modeling framework use, uh, uses a uh, three dimensional cubic space uh, to simulate the chemotactic behavior of bacteria in a microbial community. It also allows the integration of transcriptomic data using constraint based methods uh, to characterize different phenotypes, uh, phenotypes within the community. For example, this uh, method has been used to simulate cross-feeding between the Fecalibacterium prausnitsi and the Bifidobacterium adolescentis in the human good. The main platform for the implementation of uh, ACBM is the Java, which calls uh, MATLAB to apply a constraint-based uh, metabolic model each time step. The IndyMesh is also a hybrid constraints and agent-based tool that uses a two-dimensional grid to simulate the dynamics and movement of bacteria and the diffusion, diffusion of chemical compounds with a poor network. It can simulate changes in cell abundance in response to external perturbations and the differentiation of microbial populations according to the local environment. For example, this tool has been used to predict trophic relationships between different populations of two pseudomonas species. Uh, in another study, Indemesh predicted, predicted the spatial distribution and metabolic behavior of pseudomonas, uh, stutzeri under wet and dry soil conditions. Uh, under dry conditions, the entire population was characterized by aerob uh, aerobic metabolism due to oxygen, oxygen penetration. Various uh, under wet conditions, uh, nit uh, nitrate uh, consumption was predicted. Uh, Indimesh uh, also is a MATLAB based uh, tool. Finally, uh, the MIMOSA is the third agent based method, which follows a similar approach to the previous process, uh, but uses multi objective optimization 
uh, to simulate spatial and temporal concentration changes of different species. In the figure, you can see the individually uh, optimized optimized fluxes for each type, uh, cell type depicted by blue and green weighted arrows, which are used to update chemical concentrations in the two-dimensional environment and to decide uh, whether cells divide or, or differentiate based on their size. Uh, this tool was uh, used, for example, to model two different cell types of Trihodesmium erythraeum, uh, the photoautotrophic and uh, the diazotrophic types, and uh, uh, it accurately uh, predict, uh, accurately predicted the differential activation of biochemical pathways by varying the weight of the objective function according to cell size. Uh, this function favored biomass production at, sm at uh, small cell sizes, glycogen production at larger cell sizes. Another study uh, allowed a spatial and temporal simulation of how changes in the microenvironment, particularly light intensity, affect the metabolic flux distribution of individual cells. Uh, in summary, these tools have the potential to capture the composition of the microbial community and the spatial and temporal extensions, extensions uh, allow us to understand an ever wider range of microbial interactions and biological functions. And uh, the table also gives uh, you an overview of the features of uh, the tools I have spoken about here and some more. In addition to the community modeling methods discussed uh, here, which are practically single scale models, except uh, for spatial models that include dynamic FBA, the genome scale network reconstructions can be successfully incorporated into multi scale models. While uh, pairwise interactions consider only the metabolites shared by two species, multi species models allow the sharing of metabolites between more than two taxa. Host microbial interaction models, which I will discuss in more detail later, include all micro microbial species in a meta model and uh, model the interaction with the host. And uh, micro uh, microbe, microbe, and microbe host interactions are multi level models that take into account not, on, not all interactions, but also uh, interactions with the host. The opportunities for multi scale modeling are abundant with the increasing availability of omics data. data. In the network reconstruction process, uh, these data are essential, especially the genomics as well as proteomics or metabolomics data. These are used to transform a general network reconstruction into state specific metabolic models by applying these omics data as constraints on extracellular and intracellular responses. Uh, for example, Metagenomic data can be used to determine the community structure of the microbiome by mapping metagenomic reads from fecal samples to a given set of gut microbial reference genomes using sequence alignment tools. Uh, however, the presence of a microbiome, uh, the presence of microbe uh, in a sample doesn't imply that uh, all its genomically encoded metabolic functions are active, and therefore additional data such as metatranscriptomic, metaproteomic, or metametabolomic data are needed. In conclusion, I will once again go through the steps of the constraint-based metabolic modeling process, highlighting that uh, these models are in fact a bridge between molecular and biochemical research and the practice of environmental engineering. Since metabolic models both describe the quanti uh, and quantify the chemical mechanisms, they are suitable for coupling uh, with biological process models and those can be used for practical applications. Uh, the four main steps of the process are uh, the sampling of microbial uh, communities from environmental systems, the characterization of community properties and species interactions through culture-dependent and culture-independent techniques, techniques and by searching in databases and literature. The third is the integration of experimental data through model development and analysis. And finally, application of the metabolic models as tools uh, to study basic mechanisms or design processes. 
However, before I move on to the different areas of applications, I want to draw your attention to a crucial point in the process. Calibration and uh, validation of the model are done by iteratively comparing the data, data generated by the model with the, experiment, um, model with the experimental data, which is a critical step in establishing the model's uh, reliability. Once the model's accuracy, accuracy <laughs> is satisfactory, it can be predicted in <laughs> applied in various fields. Uh, the time I run out of time, I can see that there, uh, there are many applications uh, for uh, constant multi spaces modeling. Uh, the the um, areas are manifold. Uh, include ecology, synthetic uh, microbial communities, human mic microbiome, uh, and so on. Uh, taken together, it is sure that constraint-based uh, microbial modeling uh, it is a very uh, is a valuable tool for elucidating the community structure, translate into function. Thank you <laughs> for your attention. Thank you, Agnes. Yeah, it was a little bit longer than it we was, planned. Yeah. Yes. Um, no, no problem. That we we have only time for one short question, and I am, I should like this, uh, to say to the participant to ask question on chat to to Agnes if it, and she okay. could answer on chat later. Okay. Okay. So, is there any question? No, which is. We have some time for that. Okay, I haven't seen. Rising. I will stop uh, stop sharing. Yeah, stop sharing, please. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah, we have a bit in delay, but I think we need only two minutes break to to change the presentation, and I stop the recording now. And after that, we continue. Okay, it's only the two minutes to 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 continue it. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>